Yo, welcome to another episode of the greatest jiu-jitsu podcast in the history of the world, the BJJ Goons Podcast. One half of the greatest tag team in this sport, Tim Mushmaster Spriggs. And with me as always every week is... What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Nonu Nico. Glad to be back for another episode. Hopefully, this will be our last virtual episode. And then after this, me and Tim will be getting back together. Um, We'll see how it goes, but Mm -hmm. welcome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Welcome, everybody, to the show. Doing in-person interviews are going to be very cool. Uh, I'm probably going to have to Uber there, though, because the parking by your place is only for two hours, which uh, doesn't make any yeah. fucking sense. We got to get you a parking pass. Like, I live in the city, for those of you that don't know, Washington, D.C. Tim's a little bit closer towards um, Baltimore, but yeah, parking uptown is kind of a pain in the butt. There are some like, if you just get like a parking pass and slide into the residential things or yeah, yeah. We'll finesse it, we'll finesse it. It and sucks, gonna, parking we, we, sucks. Yeah, we got some, uh, we're gonna be doing some drive-by podcasts too, which is really dope. We're gonna stop by and interview some people that are local um, at their places. Um, so that will be really cool coming up. Yeah, we're going to take this show on the road. That's a skill in of itself, transporting a whole operation. But I think everyone will appreciate it. We'll get better audio and video quality. And we can get out of the Zoom era of podcasts. Mm, true, true. So let's just get right into it, Nico. All right. The you theme for today. The theme for today is putting jujitsu into perspective. You know, there's a real world out here with real, real world issues. People that listen to this podcast would already know what's going on. You and I both know what's going on. So with all the crazy shit in the world, it's been easy for me to put jujitsu in perspective, but I think a lot of people can't. I made the statement earlier today off air that jujitsu is a valuable life skill, but people make it their entire personality. What do you think about that? I mean, I think there's a certain amount of people that the trolls and the people that you might interact with are talking about. Yeah, that might be true. But there's a lot of other people that use jujitsu as like a vehicle for change or it does become like a lot more than a hobby. It's either a career or a career, a career. Um, people used to hashtag jujitsu lifestyle all the time. Like it's something that they really come up doing and it's changed a lot of people's lives. So I think like, you know, certain people, you know, like if you think about like Jansen Gomez, like who you coached on the show, like if it wasn't for jujitsu, like I've known Jansen since 2014, right? I used to live in the Cantagala with him. We were neighbors, right? He trained at Checkmat though. I trained at FT. So we were on different teams, but we saw him all the time. But him and his brother are so quiet. They're so shy. I've heard Jansen speaking more English, like doing flow grappling interviews in this reality TV show than I've ever heard him speaking Portuguese in the time that I lived down the street from. So like, if it wasn't for jujitsu, like where would he be? So like for those people, I think like, you know, they, it is more than a hobby or a life skill. I can see that. My perspective is different because I started in the States and I never lived that favela jujitsu life. I appreciate where the people come from. I appreciate how that's changed people's lives. And I think that's why Brazilians still continue to dominate because it's not a game to them. From my point of reference, is more about the hobbyist that all they talk about is jujitsu. I think perspective um, is the key word there too. That you perspective. To, you know? Yes, perspective. Uh, to me, when I started, I was kind of gung ho into the jujitsu lifestyle. You know, I wore flip flop habianas everywhere. You know, I threw the shaka all the time, but I outgrew that shit. But to me, a lot of my interactions, maybe I'm just a grizzled veteran or maybe I'm jaded, but to me, you know, the jiu-jitsu lifestyle is no different than, you know, CrossFit bros or yoga bros or that kind of thing where people just follow this hot whole idea in their head of what a jiu-jitsu person is supposed to be. And they just go with the stereotype. And I notice that a lot. There's certain trends that just always follow. And 
I had to put that shit in perspective because of real life things. And it just seems really corny to me. <laughs> really corny to me. I mean, it's kind of like when you equate it to the music industry, like underground artists coming out into the mainstream and every time they get signed to a label, you know, they try to like change their image so they could sell more records and this and that. So like, I feel like you're experiencing kind of the same thing in jujitsu, especially I, since you have to compete at a high level, like you're kind of more experienced, like exposed to it. Whereas I definitely try to keep um, to the community aspect of it. It's, it's the price of doing business for me because I'm a public figure. I think it, I, I, I don't really see the benefit of being a public figure in jujitsu. I don't see too much of a financial benefit in my eyes. I don't see too much of a lifestyle benefit because that shit gets kind of annoying after a while. <laughs> yeah, because I'm because I'm tired of people just saying like, "Oh, you're a jujitsu person." Like, no, bro. Like, I really am not. Like, people ask me questions about jujitsu sometimes about what's going. But how on are you not world. a jujitsu person? Let me start. Let's have this conversation. And what? Okay. Like, first, let me say like go back to what I was saying like when he, he's talking about you know having a name in this. And I'd say like the other day I. Our former guest Adisa was on a live talking to like a Muslim brother and I thought it was dope. So I sent it to like a couple people. Tim hopped on the live and you know, I'm just sitting there in the cut in the creases watching, doing my work. But then they're like, oh, yo, yo, Tim. And they they invited him to be in the live. I was like, I'm glad his hair was dead and you know, he was ready. Cause you know, sometimes you're not prepared to like be called out. So you, you know, I kind of forget, <laughs> you know, you walk into a room yeah. and attract a lot of attention. But at the mm -hmm. same time, you know, how that could be hard for you. I recognizing that like when you have that name how can you say that you're not jujitsu? Like, I know you want to transition to wrestling, but you know. I like the conversation that I had with Adisa because it was deeper than, oh, you compete. Oh, drama, drama, drama. What do you think about this? It was a deeper meaning. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a jujitsu conversation. It was a martial arts conversation. Was it was a like, life yes. conversation. And I respect that part of martial arts, but jujitsu, maybe it never has been in this country, something that's about the martial arts ethos, about self-improvement, about community, about integrity. I don't think it's ever really been that way. Even the people that I looked up to when I first entered into this art martial art, because I've been doing martial arts since I was a little kid. Uh, my, some of my earliest memories of sports are doing karate classes and breaking boards. Mm. And that's what I did martial arts for. Everything else, the drama, um, the competitive side of it, that was just something that I did because I loved competing and I loved practicing the art. And I was gifted with opportunities to express myself. And I had God-given abilities that I had to harness and expand upon through my journey in martial arts. That I respect. As far as me saying I'm not a jujitsu person, what I mean is I don't just do jujitsu. I'm a martial artist. I'm more than just this industry because people confuse jujitsu with martial arts. Jujitsu is an industry in my mind. You know, like the flows, the, 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 the blogs, the social media interactions, the shallow, interactions or just the, I mean, I'm trying to think of this word, just the shallow interactions, like that's not what I'm that's into. superficial stuff. It's superficial shit. And I like getting into conversations about how it makes you a better person or um, maybe even the technical side of, of the martial arts and the understanding that, you know, my issue with the whole putting jujitsu in perspective thing is that we have to look at it as martial artists. Jiu-Jitsu is in the be all, the end all, and clout does not indicate skill. Clout does not indicate what you bring to the table as a martial artist. And that's what I've been trying to separate myself from. And it's a big reason why I don't like being in this, this cycle or this media cycle so necessarily. Like with the whole flow issue, my issue with Flo was never that, you know, I don't, I, at the end of the day, I don't want to give a shit about attention or whether or not they gave our team a, a fair amount of play in the, in the media. My issue has been that lately, you know, they, they play games. Like they, 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 
they're not people, they're not journalists. It's, it's more of a TMZ type of thing. It's more of a tabloid. And they say things like certain people in there, like Michael Sears, they just stir up drama. And I don't like drama. And I think that you said community, the jujitsu community as a whole doesn't like drama either. And it makes me not say I'm jujitsu. I say I'm a martial artist, I'm a person outside of it. That's what I mean, you know, because, you know, I don't, I tell the truth. I, I, I don't try to fight my battles with the trolls and the bots online. I use my platform. So yeah, it's BJJ goons, but you know, at the end of the day, this is people in the community talking about things that matter to them and to the world outside of it. So that's what I mean by I'm not a jujitsu person. And that's what I try to do when I put jujitsu in perspective. I use the skills that I learned in jujitsu. I learned, I use my platform that I gained in jujitsu to be an artist outside of just fighting and to build community as best as I can. But on the Patreon, we talked about how organizing community is a little bit deeper than just likes and follows and posts and podcast episodes. No, it takes hard a lot. I can't speak today, y'all. I'm sorry. Tongue twist, tongue tied. <laughs> it, takes, it takes a lot of hard work, you know, and being a leader in the community, one thing that we talked about there is like, you know, being a good competitor does not make you a good community leader. So unfortunately, companies like Flow, like when you are a big company, you think of it from a business perspective, like they're kind of making like clickbait and content that's similar to like having cops come out. Cops is like super popular. People love watching that stuff, but it's like the worst of America, you know? So you got to pay the bill somehow. And one would assume that it's like through streaming fights and this and that, but obviously reality TV show is always what reality TV show is. And like jujitsu and people, athletes coming up and trying to like brand themselves or kind of branding themselves along the guidelines of like that drama, trolling, reality TV show type thing. Speaking of coming up in the game and understanding branding, I didn't put this in the outline, but I had someone message me on the DM on Insta, and it's an up and coming grappler. I'm not going to tell you guys who, but he has, he's been dealing with a lot of people talking shit or trolling, and he asked me some advice on that. And the best advice I could give him was man, fuck all that noise. You should just go out there and train. You have to understand that there's a lot of people in the sport that don't like us being in this space because they probably feel as though this is a safe haven for them to get their bullshit off. And for a lot of people, this is their last chance of athletic fame and uh, just prowess, you know? They probably failed at other sports, or maybe they did, you know, they just look at this as a, a means for them to kind of get their, their fantasies of being a pro athlete off, and they're gonna hate on you. So all you gotta do is just use it as motivation and continue to do your thing and spread your knowledge as best as you can. And that's, that, that's what I think of when I think of, you know, navigating and branding yourself. You should be branding yourself as what's appealing about the art, which is learning, which is skills. All that other bullshit is going to take away from your overall message if you have one. True. Very true. Uh, and it's hard. And I'm glad that that person reached out because I think it's really important to try to network. And like, it's not necessarily networking. I think a lot of people, especially as an introvert, this is an introvert saying this, I hate talking mm-hmm. to people, but like I'll slide into a few DMs or especially people in the jujitsu community, they're really like welcoming and you can kind of approach people of color, or people that you look up to or people that you might want to have a conversation with. Um, yes. And that's always a great idea because I know like there's a lot of people that aren't in places like DC or Baltimore where you have multiple gyms. So you're kind of limited into the places you can train and the people that you're surrounded with. But that's why we have social media. Like you can, you know, try to beat that like the algorithm and search out these people and try to make these connections with people. And if you want to try to trick the algorithm, like I said, like commenting on posts, saving posts, like leaving up to like four words on these people posts, that will help them kind of keep them in your feed a little bit more to kind of 
take out all of the negativity you see and then just block the trolls man I like I block so many people I've had to block people from my business page um that are like anti-Black Lives Matter and things like that you just kind of have to curate your community and try to make the effort to find you know that good part of jujitsu because if you don't and you get to where Tim is like you know Tim like he says he starts feeling jaded and he's surrounded by all these people and it gets kind of hard to remember what like the mission and the vision was oh i remember the mission the vision i'm just telling people how it is i know i i mean it is very real it's very real i'm just telling people how it is and how to deal with it like a little pro tip you got to make it so if someone wants to comment on your shit they have to follow you so that's enough <laughs> so therefore if they want to talk shit about you that's cool but you have to follow the person. And then it's funny when you look at the comments, they're like, you can't even, why won't he let anybody tag him? I'm like, yeah, because you have to follow me. Like, you got to pay to play, baby. I'm, I'm trying to get that blue check mark. Oh, you're a little ho now. Okay, I feel you. I'm just saying, I'm being that, that's a genius in my eyes. It's genius. You got to pay to play. Like, if you're going to handle something, you have to follow them. And then if you follow and unfollow, if you want to keep talking shit, you're just going to have to follow me back. And if you follow me and talk shit, that's fine. Another follower. That's great. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Like Chestnut check. Unlock, un unlock fee. So like when you block people, they have to like just put your cash out, unlock. <laughs> um, I have one last thing to say to talk about since we're wrapping up. There's a curse to being good at something. <laughs> There's a curse of being good. And here's what I mean. I'm pretty damn good at jujitsu, but I'm a martial artist. And I like doing other martial arts, namely Muay Thai. When I'm not too busy or beat up from pro wrestling and busy with life and these projects that I have, did I like I doing Muay Thai. Did I say you were a hoe before? Or did I'm I miss that out? Um, I forget what you said. It was just like literally 30 seconds ago. You got to pay to um, play? Yes, pay to play. Like that's some ho shit. And then he was like, okay, you you wanna leave jujitsu. I have text messages from this morning talking about, oh, like you and your jujitsu career. And I was like, ah, blah. um, but then wrestling, that's one thing. But now you're saying Muay Thai, that's some ho behavior. I like just stand training. up. You got some hoochie daddy shorts on too right now, Tim. I bet you no, do. I don't oh, have I bet any. you do. I don't have any right now. Uh yeah. but anyway, you're, you're you're talking about Muay Thai. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, Muay Thai. Uh, I, you know, I want to start doing Muay Thai more. Last year, I did a lot for like all winter into spring, but I stopped once I started training for wrestling and I went to class about a week ago, two weeks ago. And, you know, I'm just doing the class. One guy was holding pads with and training partners. You know, you alternate when you're holding pads. One person's like, oh man, You've done Muay Thai before. You've done striking before. And I, yes, I dabbled. And then one of the coaches is there is like, hey, hey, man. Like, he's already fantasy booking me for a fight. Like, I never said that I wanted to fight. I never said that I was interested in getting in a cage, doing any smokers. I just told, and I told this person, I said, hey, man, you know, I just wanted to keep the blade sharp. I wanted to train, you know, Muay Thai so I stay sharp just in case I get in a fight in real life, or I just want to know, because I like moving my body. I love martial arts. This guy goes and tells one of the other coaches, like, hey, man, he says he wants a fight. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I didn't say that. I'm just like, huh? Hey, man, let me tell you something. It's OK. And, what I, and this goes back to putting jujitsu in perspective. It's OK to just do martial arts for fun. Now I put a quote out there that if you don't compete and you're able-bodied, you're kind of you're a bitch. And if you don't compete at least once, unless like you're really like you have a physical ailment or something, I understand. That's an extenuating circumstance. But yes, if you're doing jujitsu, you need to compete at least once. Okay. I did think I saw on this outline saying like, you don't need to be competing all the time. I was like, you can't say that after you just you don't call have, people I, bitches for not competing, but you just wrap that up. You explain that kind of beautifully. Like, yeah, of course, also, this, this, had was me, this had me yeah. laughing when I saw it on, on, on the uh, outline. Cause that click, he said the curse of being good. And I was like, what is this cocky motherfucker talking about? It is a curse. <laughs> but like that also like, 
I know coaches like that, like Muay Thai coaches. And on the Patreon, we were talking about how B, uh, BJJ Avery like made this um, post about, you know, really thinking about if your your coach is pro rights, like what does that mean? But there's like a lot of overzealous coaches, like they'll see a big dude that looks like they can fight. Like they don't even need to look like, like actually be able to fight. They just kind of look scary and they get really excited about putting them into a fight. So they're like, oh, he's a black belt and completely unqualified to fight stand up. Cause like, you know, you might be dabbling in stand up, but like you haven't been really training to fight. So it's like, yo, you're still in yeah. that. It's like, so what kind of crazy coach is going to be like, oh yeah, he's trying to fight. And da, 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 da. I bet they'd have you in a fight in like two months from now, which is way too soon. Like no coach that really cared about you would ever do anything like that to you. But it's hilarious. It's hilarious when we talk about like that reality TV mentality. Yeah. It's that reality TV mentality. It's the mentality that you don't, if you're looking at someone that way, you're not even taking into account what their wants and needs are. Mm. It's pretty selfish. You know, like not everybody that's big and strong that can fight should fight or wants to fight. As I've grown into a more mature person, I realize that fighting isn't just physical, it's mental and it's a will to train and to sacrifice. Most people aren't willing to do that because they have other things that they're putting all their energy in, whether it's a career, whether it's their family, and they don't want to put it into fighting. And it's not like fighting pays that well. Unless you are in the top 1%, it does not pay that well. And the sacrifices needed to do that are gonna take away your ability to provide for yourself outside of the sport. That's just the financial reality of fighting. And as a coach, you, I mean, I see where you wanna make competitive fighters that go into the professional ranks. But you're going to make more money and have more students long term if you just train them to be better martial artists and to most importantly have fun. To me, I've been around fighters. I know about the ups and downs. I've trained with them. I've done striking with them. I know what it's like. This is not for me. Because if you're going to choose to be fighting in a cage or in a ring or on a jujitsu mat, judo mat, you're going to have to make so many sacrifices that it's just going to be something that you got to be all in. You're going to compete at a high level. If you want to be professional, you're all in. And 99.9999999999% of people are not all in. <laughs> Nor should they be. We need doctors and lawyers and IT professionals. He said, no, should they say? You got to stay in your lane. Just stay in your lane. It's fine. But yeah, man, that's the curse of being good at something because everyone thinks just because someone's good at jujitsu that they should fight. No, it takes time. It takes a lot of time. But that's all. To, and like when you talk about having perspectives, it's like you really need to have your own perspective and not let yourself get carried away by peer pressure because that can happen a lot, whether it be in jujitsu and Muay Thai. And like Muay Thai, mm -hmm. you can't talk about punches in the face. You got to cut weight. Like if you don't know how to cut weight properly, which isn't the same as doing it for jujitsu like and you go against somebody that like wants to screw around and cut 20 pounds just because uh, yeah. like and local matchmakers too like I know a lot of the local matchmakers and promoters so you got to be aware of that as an athlete like these matchmakers you know between coaches not being qualified matchmakers not being good like fight menus not having everything that they need or being in random spots like not every fight is a good fight no this is a good, good topic for another episode. Maybe we should bring in a fight promoter or somebody that is familiar with coaching athletes in a fight game. I wonder who we could get on here. Hmm. Hmm. That's another topic for another day. Nico, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram at Nonu Nico. If you're trying to learn Portuguese, I've been dropping a lot of Portuguese language tips. And you can go over to favelajujitsu.com to get articles that have the BJJ vocabulary. Uh, you can also get your official BJJ Goons merch over there. So that's favelajujitsu.com. You can find me at timspriggsbjj.com. I teach private lessons and seminars, both in person and virtually. I will also create a BJJ game plan for you if you so choose, and I can critique your match footage. 
All of this can be found at timspriggsbjj.com. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook at timspriggsbjj. I only check it about once a day. So if I don't get back to you soon, it's okay. Just uh, wait for my response or uh, send a carrier pigeon or you have my phone number. Why are you messaging me on the DM? Just text or call me, homie. But on behalf of Nico Ball and myself, I want to say thanks for listening. We will see you next time on the BJJ Goons podcast. Peace.